to the JR Wisdom channel. All of my subscribers, thank you for tuning back in. And all of you new viewers and potential subscribers, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to my video. And uh, make sure y'all hit the subscribe button and y'all might see something you like on my other videos. Today, it's Sunday. And I just wanted to uh, make a quick video. Not so much Sunday school, but I might start doing something of the like. Um, just try and get back on some of the videos that I said I was going to be doing in reference to religion and more so on health. But this one today is going to be uh, basically talking about the correlation between Jesus, Christianity, and Greco-Roman mythology. I've done similar videos in the past touching on this topic, but not so much in detail. This one, there's so much that I could cover on this, but I'm just going to stick to uh, a few things in particular in reference to uh, Greco-Roman mythology, you know, the uh, the culture and things of that nature that uh, share similarities with Christianity and uh, other things. A lot of these, a lot of things that we see in many of the, these religions, they have uh, similar parallels. There's similar stories that we'll see continuously over and over. And this is not to debunk anything, but is more so to show similarities or basically flat out plagiarism, so to speak. So with that being said, we all know that Greece and Rome both occupied Judea at one point or at what's known as Israel, Jerusalem, so on and so forth. And before the advent, and this is what I want everybody to realize who don't know, before the advent of Jesus Christ, so to speak, and, uh, you know, him him becoming the, the figurehead that he is in a Greek and Roman culture and religion, Romans, these, these people, they, they were a polytheistic society, which basically means they worship many gods, as you know. For those of you who have studied Greek and Roman mythology, Greek and Roman mythology is very similar. Uh, a lot of the gods are the same, but they just have different names, obviously because of the language. The Greek church uh, and the Roman church are two of the largest churches in the world as far as the religion orthodox. You know, you have uh, Catholicism, obviously, which is based in um, Rome, Vatican City which is a European religion, just as the Greek Orthodox Church is a uh, European religion as well. So with that being said, I just want to start before I get off into the similarity with the gods. Is the name Jesus, you know, the etymology of Jesus himself, right? We know that Jesus is an anglicized form of the Hebrew name and also the name of uh, the Greek name and also the Italian, Latin, uh, Spanish name. So we want to start back with the, the Hebrew name or Aramaic as he was known as Yeshua or Yehoshua, which was a very common name, which I've said before in my other videos. Um, Yehoshua basically translates to uh, Joshua or Yeshua tr translates to Joshua. And there were many Joshua's before Jesus came about. So, and obviously at that time, you know, there were no J's. So we, as time passed on, anglicized form and the translations, it, we came with the J. So we go to the, uh, to the, to the Greek name, which is uh, Isus, which was first where it was taken to is Isus. So you see the similarities between Jesus and and Zeus, Zeus obviously being the chief god or the main god in Greek mythology. Zeus. Some people will argue because there's been this argument. Zeus means hail Zeus, and uh, with this hail Zeus part, we get uh, Jesus, which is the Latin name, Italian name, Spanish name, Jesus. Jesus being another name of Jesus, which could be translated to hail Zeus. And a lot of uh, scholars say that this is bull and that's not true and things of that nature. But I'll leave you up to do your research on that, you know, as far as the names. How, how do you go from Yeshua to Zeus? 
I can see where you get uh, Zeus to Jesus. That's very similar. But as I said, we look at this etymology, it's it's so similar to Jesus. And I'll get into the similarity between uh, these gods as well um, with the Latin and Romanized names. Now, we know without a, without a doubt, for the most part, that Saul of Tarsus, also known as Paul, the 13th apostle, wrote over half of the New Testament. And some say he might have written most of the New Testament because a lot of the other letters were written in the same style that he wrote the letters in. But that's a subject of debate as well, which I'm not going to get into. But one thing that we must realize is that Paul was a Roman citizen. And in order to make this religion that he was bringing about of Christianity palatable to Europeans, the polytheistic uh, society of Greek and Rome, he needed to introduce a few things. Like they say, I guess it's said that you can't feed steak to a baby. You have to give them little small pieces at a time or small uh, soft food so that the baby accepts it, or that's with anyone. You can't just give them all the information at one time. You have to introduce something to someone so that it's slowly, uh, it's palatable. They're more easily to accept it. So this was one of the, the I don't want to say tactics, but this is one of the things that uh, Saul did, or Paul did at this time. So um, he was very versed, even though he was a Jew, he was very versed in Roman mythology because of the Roman culture and the gods so jupiter is the counterpart of zeus in uh, roman mythology there's also a a uh a god called dionysus or dionysus however you want to pronounce it who was the son of zeus he's in in roman mythology he's known as bacchus so bacchus is has you know so many similarities to jesus jesus christ or jesus christos because Christos translates to the Messiah in, uh, in Greek. So the similarities being Apollo, not, not so much the god of the sun, but he was the one who brought the sun forward, who was also the son of Zeus. Apollo, Bacchus, also known as Dionysus, and the sun were one, sort of like the Trinity. So you have three, three gods in one, so to speak, as a Trinity. Uh, Dionysus, uh, like I said, he was the son of Zeus. He was born of a virgin. On December 25th, on the winter solstice, uh, he's the son of the Heavenly Father Zeus, as I said. He's the holy child. He was placed in a, a cradle in a manger amongst uh, animals and beasts. He was a traveling teacher who performed miracles like Jesus. He was the god of the vine, a.k.a. wine. Uh, and I don't know if my teeth look purple, purple today. I had my communion this morning. Some um, Calypso cookies and some uh, and some Lambrusco. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure that my, my stuff wasn't purple or whatever. So uh, he also he was a god of the vine and of bread. He turned water into wine as well. Uh, he rode on the back of a, a a donkey, you know, in a triumphal procession. He was, uh, um, he was, the way he was killed, and this is where a lot of the communion, which I was just talking about, comes into. He was killed, and he was eaten by the Titans, right? It's the Titans uh, gave birth to the gods, so to speak. So, he was eaten by the Titans, which we see a lot in Greek and Roman mythology, where gods are eating humans, or Titans are eating gods, and so on and so forth, and they're eating the flesh of each other which basically made its way into christianity with communion jesus saying eat my flesh this is my blood you know all that things things like that which is called a eucharistic ritual so he was eaten by the titans due to the jealousy of hera which was the the wife of zeus which zeus as you know uh had sex with many of human beings which is another thing of uh Jesus coming about, how they try to relate this thing. Um, he had sex with many women, and uh, Hera basically was so jealous, she conspired and had the Titans eat Dionysus. 
but his heart was left over. Then this is all crazy stuff that may sound to you, and just like Christianity, it'll sound crazy to some people. But his heart was left over. Zeus uh, took a piece of his heart, so to speak, the way it's narrated, and uh, he attached it to his thigh, and he was reborn from Zeus's thigh to be hidden to the time when he was grown. Um, his mother, when his mother died, he traveled to the underworld of Hades for three days to rescue his mother and came back, brought her back from the dead. He rose from the dead on March 25th and ascended into heaven. Um, he was deemed the father, the liberator, the, sav the savior. Um, he was considered the only begotten son. And, uh... You know, the King of Kings, God of Gods, Sin Bearer, Redeemer, Anointed One, Alpha, and the Omega. He was identified as the Ram or the Lamb, and uh, he was the young man of the tree. So these are just a, a few things about Dionysus, or Di Dionysus, however you want to, want to pronounce it. The next thing I want to get into, and I don't want to be, you know, be too long-winded on this, is uh, there's a concept that I've spoken about called anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is when you assign, and this is the case a lot in Greek and Roman mythology, where you assign godlike or manlike qualities to a god, right? And in this case, this is this was done with Jesus, this was done with Zeus, just to make it more acceptable to human beings. So Jesus was given these qualities. Of being a god but if you know with anthropomorphism you can't be a man and a god at the same time because that eliminates the other hence jesus praying to himself if he was a god why would he be praying to himself if he's the almighty so just like you can't have a short tall man and you can't have a skinny fat man you can't have a god man um at the same time so this this concept of anthropomorphism is pushed all throughout Greco-Roman mythology. It's like the basis of Greco-Roman mythology is anthropomorphism. So it, it made its way into Christianity into where not only do you believe that God can die, but you believe that God can become a man. And in order for God to understand man, God needs to become a man. So if you're the creator of something, you actually need to become your creation to understand it. Just like if if you manufacture automobiles or if you're an engineer, if you created uh, this automobile or a television or a DVD player or a Blu-ray, whatever. You have to become that car, that DVD player in order to understand how it operates. This is the thought process, the way uh, you're way many christians teach that this is why god had to become a man so he could understand and feel the pain of human beings and this god had to die for your sins which all this is based in greco-roman mythology as far as sacrificing uh sacrificing things giving an offering all of this stuff is in pagan is paganistic rituals you know a lot of the things we see is from pagan paganistic rituals so, um, another one we see is Hercules. Hercules, he performed many miracles, known as labors. Um, he was the son of God, the son of Zeus. Uh, he, he, he suffered during his life, performing these miracles. And uh, after his death, he earned div divinity and rose to Mount Olympus as well. So these are other uh, correlations between the two. So um, this is this this concept we 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 see consistently in uh, Greco-Roman mythology. We see these concepts, um, and like I said, the parallels of what goes on, and we accept it just as is, whether it be Lent, Easter. Um, several other religions birthdays crisis birthday christmas things like that it just continues on and on and there's not even really given a basis of why it is this way but it is this way due to the 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 fundamentals on which it was started on which was of a greco-roman mythology at the end of the day 
Now, I could get into, you know, astrology and all of that stuff, which is a different topic, which you have many people who are Christian and other religions, but they still follow astrology and horoscopes and zodiac signs, which has a long history, but more so as of current times, it's based in Greco-Roman mythology. This, so they'll worship God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, but also believe in these zodiac signs and horoscopes and things like that. The compatibility based upon the sign that they were born under. Um, I can go into frats and, you know, fraternities and sororities and all these other things. But even down to our government, it's the new Roman, you know, Greco-Roman Empire down to our government, the way our government functions. Uh, the United States, more so, he, he, more, most of the Western world is the new Rome, Roman Empire, the way it functions. But I'm just going to stick on the correlation between Jesus, Christianity, and uh, Greco-Roman mythology. I know I've been talking too long. Um, make sure y'all comment. I want to hear y'all thoughts on this as well. Make sure you like the video. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you don't like the video, dislike it. Uh, feel free to donate a couple coins in the Well of Wisdom. You know, uh, the link is in the description. Follow me on social media. Link is in the description. Check out my books on Amazon. The links are in the description. And if you have any topics that you'd like me to discuss, feel free to email me. Um, all of that is in the description. And remember, anything lost can be found again except for time wasted. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.